Hello and welcome to this week's look at action and stunts on film and television. How are you? Good to see you again. Thanks for stopping by. If you've listened to the podcast this week, you will know that we are having a look at Burt Reynolds' double bill from 1973 and 76. Why double bill? Well, it, it's Apart from the Smoking the Bandit franchise, it's the first time that Burt had done two movies as the same character. 1973, the picture is White Lightning, and in 1976, the movie is Gator. His character, Gator McCluskey, uh, runs through both. Uh, the first picture, of course, is full of carb gags and uh, typical driving bits and pieces. In fact, there's a great deal of um, continuity there between um, the work on there, the characterization on there, some of the dialogue on there from Smokey and the Bandit. One carried over to the other. And then in 1976, he moves on to Gator. Uh, and, and of course, the reason that he was allowed to do that um, White Lightning such a hit at the time and it made a great deal of money they wanted to do a sequel pretty quickly but the only reason that Burt held out for it was because that if he wanted to do a sequel he wanted to direct it it's his first directorial picture and um, he went on to direct a handful of uh, pictures after that he did a fair bit of television too but uh, did a, uh, a very good directorial job on Gator in both occasions, the movies are under the action coordinating of Hal Needham. And Hal Needham, of course, one of the uh, founding members of Stunts Unlimited. And um, uh, I, if you're not familiar with Stunts Unlimited, let me just read you a little passage here. Uh, this is uh, from the president of uh, Stunts Unlimited. This is from their 2018 book, uh, Pat Romano. And it says as follows, in 1970, Hal Needham, Ronnie Rundell and Glenn Wilder left the Stuntman's Association of Motion Pictures and they started their own organisation of elite stunt performers and were the first stunt group to ask women to become full members. They call this rebel gang Stunts Unlimited because their talents were unlimited. They're still the top motorcycle racers, car drivers, stunt riggers, fight choreographers, horsemen, pilots and aerial specialists, all with innovative ideas and progressive thinking needed for the future of stunts in film and television. Seven years after the inception of Stunts Unlimited, Hal Needham and the members of Stunts Unlimited made a tribute to the stunt community with the film Hooper. The name of the young hotshot character based on Stunts Unlimited member Buddy Joe Hooker. The film Hooper had been single-handedly responsible for sparking the dreams of countless stunt performers for decades. Um, that movie, of course, we've covered already. This is the early days of the business. As far as these guys were concerned, Hal, not only the stunt coordinator, but directing all the action uh, on this and Gator. Uh, we will have a look at some of the action here and uh, break it down for you. This is White Lightning. So, let's start with White Lightning. And a familiar face or two as the car comes by, a police officer, Buddy Joe Hooker in the passenger seat, saying, uh, that's not a booze vehicle or a drug vehicle, I don't know what it is. Dick Zyker, as the driver, and they set off in hot pursuit of this particular vehicle. Burt Reynolds will be riding blocker, here he comes. Look at the camera angles here, of course, as well. Cameras on the front of the vehicle, uh, very clearly see what's going on behind. Lots of low-angle stuff as well. This is from his years of television, being able to capture action like this. Try and do it in a new and exciting way. When you've got vehicles, you want to try and get as much out of them as you possibly can. And that's a, a very traditional shot there. Now, Bert doing a great deal of his own driving here. This is not on a low loader like they would have now. This is very much those 
vehicles going by for real we're using a train in this sequence as well the car comes down wants to make a swift left hits the handbrake gets round the other side again Bert doing it I'm trying to get round the other side of that train to block them off that's a shot from earlier on in the sequence incidentally if you uh, if you are watching that film you'll see that at the very start of this sequence there, that's the cut-off point there, so he manages to get between the two, and the, there's the police car blocked off the other side. Further down the line, again, lots of dust going into the wood yard here. And again, Bert behind the wheel. So all of this type of stuff is Bert, quite capable behind the, uh, behind the wheel. Hal's happy to have him there getting this done. Churning up lots of dust behind them. Buddy and Dick, obviously in the police car struggling, slides into here and down comes the wood. Ooh, that's a heavy. You wouldn't want that on top of you. So, again, further on, and is now... There's a lot of gear changing in car chases, too. Have you noticed that? You don't really do that in car chases, but there's a lot of... From a visual perspective, they do a great deal of it. There's also uh, some talk about whether some of this is stick shift or column control. I think they might have had two vehicles. So he decides to power on. Any car jumping would have been done by Hal. And again, that car jumped over there. This is the point where they're trying to get now away to... Uh, the top end here where the barge jump will happen we've talked about it on the podcast you've possibly read a great deal about it but he stops here he takes a look how far away is that currently that's a big leap and i'm suspecting that's just a sort of b-roll shot of it going across it's not that far away when he comes in to do the jump itself for real but Obviously, there was an issue because there was a communication breakdown and he stood on the beans a bit. 80 miles an hour, bang, hits it right on the end, not in the middle, which is where apparently that first shot went to. The rehearsal shot had him landing out in the middle. Barge operator took off like a scalded cat. And look at the way in which that's bent up at the end. You know, it's a proper mess. And uh, uh, subsequently broke Hal's back. Not in a good situation. That had to be hauled off to hospital. Have his lungs drained. And, uh, oh, it's the last thing you want. Now, further down the line, who's this? It's Glenn Wilder. Glenn Wilder doing some driving with Ned Beatty next to him. And he's in charge because of that. Slides down the end there. Ned Beatty then gets out of the car, gets into another police car and is chasing his way after and says, I got you now, and then gets to the point where he runs out of road completely. Oh, dear. Now, there's the cut up again. That's probably Hal doing that. I've got no confirmation of anything else at this stage. But would you bear in mind that that's just jumped over Bert, who's there next to the car? That'd be a CGI shot these days, most likely. You wouldn't get the star standing under it. Look, he's standing there. That's very clearly Bert. It's not anybody else. So the movie, this movie itself, and of course, you know, whoever's in the car's got to get that submerged, get away, and then be able to get out. But um, that's quite a feat, quite a feat of engineering to have the actor the money standing underneath that car as it comes over gator a few years later of course bert at the helm uh for di um for directing this and this is bert in uh, one of the glastron boats i seem to remember um a lot of use of boats in this and the bayous here i'd be really concerned about crocodiles i have an issue with crocodiles anyway reptiles per se i'm not terribly keen on there's a lot of guys going in the water here and obviously they'd need to be able to double check and make sure that oh yeah see you're in the water there bayous are formidable for that type of thing that creeping creature boat going around on its own they got to try and block it off and your man dives into the boat here's one into a tree <laughs> oh shit here he comes and that'll be hal doubling him going through there and again the boys bailing into the water i say there is another one where he, a guy gets 
caught up at the front of a tree. Oh, here it is. Boof! Right in there, look. And another one's desperately trying to get something started before he disappears through the middle of them. I mean, it's impressive stuff. And then you get the helicopter shots as well, right? So you get the visuals of the boat going away and the chopper being in the same sequence. That's nice, being filmed from over here. Get the both of them in frame. But then there are shots which are very clearly... That's Chuck Tamburo, who's the uh, helicopter pilot on this picture. Uh, worked on many, many pictures as a helicopter pilot. So you get the shots, the Bert in the boat... They cut back to the helicopter here, and then you get a two shot with them in the same sequence, and and that's Bert in a boat. Look, the helicopter's just there. It's not a million miles away. It's not a CG. That's right over the top of him. You know, this is 1976, and all that water being sprayed up on top of the um, on top of the chopper, um, and then when he does manage to get away a second time, it's boat jump time. This is this is nice. In slow mo, shot in slow mo, up, down, and again, you see the way in which we talked about this on Live and Let Die, where they angle that engine back at the back, just managed to get the lift, and one, of course, disappearing through your man's house, uh, who was uh, on the side of the jetty there, saw it all happening, and again, the boats out there now this is the other sequence the vehicle shot this is a hell of a gag here this is dick zyker doubling this guy it was supposed to be richard keel originally uh, but wasn't able to do so he takes a real beating look like he bang right into the wheel arch of that car throws him up into the air and manages to uh, get himself off on the other side he's going to be wearing a great deal of padding under that i would have thought to uh, to assist him but this is the climactic end of this picture and here, uh, Bert jumps on the back. Jerry Reed, the villain, up. And that's Hal Needham doubling Bert there. It's a remarkable shot, but look how close he gets to the front of this. He then There's a little ramp at the end which kicks the wheels up. Tommy Huff's driving. He leaps off thinking, right, I'm going to jump clear. The sand gets hold of it, and he doesn't go as far as they wanted it to and he nearly lands right on top of that that could very easily have rolled over and uh, and crushed him he was so so lucky but i mean it's just it's a remarkably exciting moment at the end of that chase tommy huff driving very important to remember that tommy's a great double tommy was also doing some of the doubling in this fight here he's doubling jerry reed and, uh, well, they're throwing the kitchen sink at this. Some terrific punches, some great fight work. And uh, it's really, really great to see that again. And you should explore both of those movies. Jerry Reed's a wonderful villain in this, uh, in this second picture. So check those out. You won't be wrong. There you go. That is uh, White Lightning and Gator. Hal Needham, Duff, get himself into some bother, didn't he? Um, that car jump and... Uh, you know as brilliant as it is to look at on screen the amount of trouble that he went through not only physically um uh, on that is just remarkable the rehearsal take um of course the barge operator um set off at a designated speed a designated rate of knots and in a previous rehearsal how made the jump and landed on the back of the barge pretty pretty much practically right in the middle of the barge jobs are good and stepped out went round that was fine that was the rehearsal and then they decided right let's go ahead and uh, let's do the take itself and uh, well the barge operator set off at an additional rate of knots floored it in point of fact and by the time that um, Hal came and approached the little ramp at the end of it. He was doing the best part of 80 miles an hour and still couldn't get on the end of the ramp, uh, on the end of the landing barge, and got part way on and part way off. All right, he landed on it, but the vehicle that he was driving, it had um, a roll cage in it, it had a safety system in it, but it still bent itself into all sorts of shapes, and that impact was enough to break Hal's back. 
and he was in serious bother. Uh, in point of fact, um, Bert dived into the water. He was standing on the on the side watching what was going on. He dived into the water, got to the barge, and uh, managed to get his pal out. And uh, then the barge was reversed back to the jetty and the ambulance crew were there waiting to get him off to hospital. It was a very lucky situation. Managed to, uh, uh, everybody, you know, with the safety teams there, getting him, getting him out as quickly as possibly can. Then to go on and be still Bert Stuntman, of course, in, in 1976 and doing a great deal of that boat work. Bert does a great deal of it himself. Um, but the uh, the boat work particularly and then to have that moment where him and Tommy Huff have to do the, the that vehicle gag at the end and Tommy does a great job you know he's got a there's a little ramp on the end of that sand dune that just kicks the car over and um, Hal's worked out that if he hangs on long enough and as the car starts to go he can then push off backwards and get away and get clear from the uh, from the truck itself as it starts to roll but it's sand and I'm pretty convinced that there wouldn't have been a rehearsal in this instance you know I'm pretty nowadays. Of course, it it would have been rehearsed on a, on a, in a number of different ways. There would have been wires. There would have been a whole safety system put in place. The vehicle itself has a roll cage in it. Tommy is in it. He would be wearing a helmet. And as it goes over, Hal has then said, "Right, I'm going to go now." And he starts to go, and he's away from the vehicle. But as the sand gets hold of the vehicle, it's stops that forward momentum it rolling and it starts to just dig in and it slowly starts to roll over and of course Hal's catching the vehicle up because he's left the vehicle now he's got to come down and he just just misses the front of that truck as it hits the sand it is a remarkable gag uh, it's beautiful to watch and of course he walked away um, and it, they got it on film and everything's magnificent, but it's just another one of those moments where you think, oh, you are just this close to having another really serious incident. Luckily, everything went according to plan, and it looked absolutely magnificent. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed that, and um, if you haven't, go and see the films. Go and watch White Lightning. White Lightning. We've only covered a few bits and pieces from it. There's another whole bunch of other bits of action in that as well. And uh, Gator's got a bunch more too. But we've highlighted a few bits for you here. Go and check them out. I'm sure they're available to watch on YouTube and various other sources. And uh, don't forget to check the podcast out if you haven't already done so. Subscribe. The button's down there. Uh, go and uh, hit the button and uh, subscribe. And join the other people that have decided that they fancy a quick weekly update on action and stunts um we'll do it all again next week we're going to be taking a little look at roadhouse next week roadhouse of course uh, has recently been reinvented or has it rebooted um not so sure if you haven't seen the original with patrick swayze from 1989 do that first that's essential and then if you do have access to seeing it i think it's on amazon prime at the moment go and see that too then we'll come back next week and we will compare both and see which is better and does this one provide more excitement than this one and and the updated version what does that offer the viewer from uh, an action perspective so uh, if you're going to do your homework and then uh, uh, papers uh, on my desk by wednesday please if you will and until next time it's bye for now <laughs>